if you ride a Harley Davidson touring motorcycle, it might have a problem, a problem that you're not even aware of. I had discovered this problem on my 2021 CBO Limited, and I'm gonna talk to you about it. Let's do it. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me, and you know this by now, or at least you should. For those of you that have never been here before, welcome to you as well. My name is Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant, and the name of this wonderful channel is Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle. And so, yes, guys, today I'm going to talk to you about your Harley Davidson touring motorcycle. Does it have a problem that you may not know about? And the answer is yes, it might. Now, this is not going to apply to all touring motorcycles from Harley Davidson. And how do I know that? Well, because this is one of four touring motorcycles that I own, and it only affects this motorcycle. Just like on my Indian motorcycle, uh, when I had the issue with the violent vibration at about 40 miles per hour, uh, and I put that video out, and I'll link that up here, it wasn't everybody's Indian Challenger or Pursuit motorcycle, but there were a lot of people that said, I'm having the same issue. So I felt I'd be remiss if I didn't share this with you as well. So let me first say, yeah, if you ride a Harley Davidson touring motorcycle, you might have this problem, but you would have no clue that you had it and you might never have discovered it. And why do I say that? Well, because I say this often, most motorcycle riders ride straight and make slight turns and that's it. And this particular problem only rears its ugly head when you fully lock the handlebars to the right. It's the only time you're gonna notice it. So if you're not somebody that ever fully locks your bars, it's not gonna be an issue. And if you're duck walking the bike while you have the bars locked, you still might not notice it. But if you're doing something like me, the way I ride and the way I discovered this is, I bring my motorcycle out here. I hadn't brought Violet out in a long time to practice, to a practice session. So I said, let me bring her out. And I do my normal warm up. And part of that is to go into the snowman, 18 feet circle. I go in there, I make a left turn, no problem at all. I go out, I come back in, make a left and hold it, go around about three times, beautiful. Come back in to make a right turn and I'm into the cones. I'm like, whoa, whoa, come on, Robert. Because I'm a huge proponent on not being a poor craftsman that blames his tools. So my first thought is, I did something wrong. I go back in, I try it again, into the cones. What is going on? Now I'm starting to get into my head. My confidence is starting to go down. Am I having an issue making right turns again? I mean, I don't think so. So I try it one more time and I go down the list. Okay, is my speed appropriate? Yes. Is my wheel placement appropriate? Absolutely. I recorded it and I watched it. Am I turning my head and my eyes? Yes. Am I committing to the lean right away? Yes. Am I fully locking the handlebars? Yes. And am I leaning enough? Yes. I checked all the boxes, I'm still into the cone. So now I'm like, all right, it ain't me. Something's going on with this motorcycle. So I go, I look, I'm looking at that cable. I still didn't realize that that cable is what's restricting the handlebars from turning to the right, because that's the issue. There's a cable on the neck of the uh, frame where you turn the handlebars. I don't know if it's a clutch cable or what. I think it's a clutch cable, but it's in the way. So and the, uh, it's two ways you can find this out, right? The first way is if you jack your motorcycle up, turn the handlebars all the way to the left. And when they turn to the left and lock, you should hear something solid hit. Then when I went, if you go and turn it to the right and you don't hear that same sound, it's hitting something, right? But I was out here, I didn't have the motorcycle jacked up. So here's how I tested it out. And I want you guys to do the same thing just to see if you're having this problem. All right guys, so all I'm simply gonna do is, I got my motorcycle on the line. I have two parking spaces here, so I'm working with 18 feet. I'm gonna fully lock the handlebars to the left and I'm going to, yes, you're gonna hear me say it, 
I'm gonna duck walk the motorcycle, right? Don't go fast or anything like that. Walk the motorcycle, feather the clutch a little bit to let it move, keep the handlebars locked the whole time, and I'm gonna see where the motorcycle ends up, where the front wheel is gonna be in comparison to the other side of the lane. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm right on the line. Well, I'm right, you know, right next to the line. Handlebars fully locked to the left. Start opening the clutch. Don't want to go too fast. Keep the bike straight up. Don't lean it. Because we know leaning the bike is going to help it turn. I don't want any help. Straight up. Look at my front wheel. I can stop right there because that's what I want to see. See where my front wheel is? All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the right side. All right. Right on the line. Full lock. And I can already feel it. It's soft. And it's not like wires from a light. You can tell it's something thick. So it's a cable. Straight up, nice and slow, no lean. Make sure I'm not going too fast. All right, and I'm gonna stop right there, guys. I'm not even finished with the turn, and I'm already going over, I'm over the line already. If I keep going, I'm just gonna be right into these cones. So can I still make an 18 foot U-turn here going right? I could, but I gotta lean the crap out of the motorcycle to do it. And guys, this matters because you can make an 18 foot on one of these motorcycles straight up. You don't have to lean it at all. See, straight up. Boom, but if you, if I don't wanna have to lean more than is necessary, that's my point. All right guys, so, um, that's all I got for you. I want you to definitely do this test just to see if um, you're having the same issue with your Harley Davidson Touring motorcycle, or really any motorcycle for that matter. I'm only saying Harley Davidson motorcycle because that's what I'm experiencing it with. Um, this, uh, this was actually an issue before, and I took it to Savannah Harley Davidson, um, and I thought it was repaired. It seemed like it was, but apparently whatever was done is now undone. So I have an appointment next week. I'm gonna take it back there. I'll let you guys know. Um, how that went and exactly what wire it was or what cable it was I should say um, But like I said guys, yeah, you can use a jack to do it But I prefer you do it this way for a couple of reasons. The main reason is You can it can practice work in that friction zone too, right? Because again, we're not using any brakes or anything and I don't want you to let the clutch out too much so that you're going too fast I want you to clutch you feel like you're going a little bit too fast pull it back in a little bit out a little bit back in boom 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 and See, see where your motorcycle ends up. All right, guys? Hope this helped you out. Hit that like button, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It definitely helps me out. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'll reply to all of the comments. The VI preloaders get priority on that, of course. And hit that notification bell. Switch it to all so you'll never miss a video when I put one out, guys. And I put out some good videos to help you guys out in the motorcycle riding community. Spend more time being thankful for the things that you have, guys. Less time complaining about the things that you don't. Break out of the mold of the average rider. Seat time doesn't equal practice time, guys. And if you have time to ride your motorcycles, you have time to practice on them. Until next time.